Welcome back. Now, in a ton of events, the Senior Staff Association of Nigerian University, SANU, which had earlier supported the implantation of the Integrated Payroll and Personnel Information System, the EPs, a government pay payment platform, has withdrawn its support for the implementation of, for its members across Nigerian universities. It stated various irregularities in the payment of February salaries as its reason. And joining me still to discuss this is political analyst, Belaba. Thank you for staying with us, Belaba. And also Fumi Ayola. Thank you very much for, for joining us. Now, do, do you sense any foul play in this? Any, any undertone? Why Sanu will all of a sudden um, make a 360 and say, you know what, I'm not in support of this any longer? No. Fumi, let me start with you. you. Know, what happened yeah. with Sanu was that they, they were in support of it, but when it was implemented, the implementation didn't come out the way they, they planned. I mean, they had, they had some agreement with government on certain issues, and when it was implemented, the agreements were not honored. I honestly feel that um, for the academia, they were too hasty in doing the 360. You all know that when you implement a system, there are always quicks and, you know, there are always issues to an initial implementation, which you will work on gradually until you get the perfection you're looking for. So I, I'm, I'm really surprised that with the level of academia they have in Sanyo, that they're so quick you know, to do a 360. It's, um, for me... Well, your, your thoughts, um, please. The Sanu reversal, for me, is more political than... than the reasons, the reasons they gave. The reasons they gave are the, the inconsistencies in what they had envisaged that it was going to do, and the fact that when they subscribed to it, some of the things they thought it would do regarding uh, certain uh, regarding the remunerations of their members yes. did not go the way they had envisaged. Uh, you must remember that from the get go. Uh, ASU had always opposed EPs because ASU believes that one is going to whittle down the autonomy of universities. Apart from the fact that it will whittle down the autonomy of universities, that they have an alternative software that would, that would meet the primary objective of government, transparency and accountability without necessarily subjecting you know, people in academia to the rigmarole of civil service working condition. You must remember that you may be a substantive lecturer in the University of Lagos and you may be a part-time lecturer at the Federal University of Federal University of Agriculture, Abeokuta. And when you want to when you want to do your sabbatical, you may end up doing your sabbatical, say in University of Maiduguri, or indeed outside the borders of Nigeria. This, these unique working conditions had not been factored into EPs. And they said they have an alternative to EPs that will still make the government achieve the primary objective of transparency and accountability. I'm sitting here now thinking, Sanu just showed that there will be senior staff members of universities, but the intellectuals have won. Well, let me explain. Sanu, you, you know, Asu and Sanu, they're way different. Though. They're, they're different. They're Asu different. is the academic yes, exactly. end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, but Sanu... Sanu yeah. is the management end. That's what I'm saying. So Sanu, then Sanu is not going on any sabbatical. They're no. not going to. They're going to, not going to be lecturing in one university. I was and talking doing, about ASU. That's what I'm saying. So why is that? So and we can understand clearly why ASU has said, "Look, this we're not subscribing to it." And I think for ASU, it's clear. It's I mean, it's very clear. What is Sano's reason? They, as far as I'm concerned, they have no reason. They're just being um, maybe because you know Sano always always wants to follow ASU's footsteps. For some I won't, so, 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 I, I won't be grudge your, I mean, no, I'm I won't not be sure that it's solidarity yeah. or... Uh, let now, me quickly yes, say this yes, to uh, the point, the valid point she's made. Uh, without, discount, without discountenancing the validity of her point, 
I really have to say at this juncture that even in the mainstream civil service, some people are beginning to question the integrity of EPs. Because, um, like any, look, I am an ardent believer in blockchain technology. And blockchain technology is the ultimate management mechanism now for centrally managed ledgers. Now, any system, when I read extensively about EPs, I shook my head. Somebody must have sold the dummy to Mr. President. Because EPs has some, some hidden doors through which it could still be manipulated for for thousands and thousands of ghost workers okay, to be on it. Yeah, but a good thing I was said last week when so uh, when the when the when the um, when the, the warning, when the warning strike started, uh, Minister Ngege did say that there were also there were meant to also be members who will operate EPs, members of us who were meant to be members of those who will be um, in, in the initiative. Exactly. Don't you think that also would have, would have been a way, I mean, exactly sense of ownership to you know, know that you know, you're saying, involved Mr. in it. President, they sold yeah. a dummy to Mr. President. There were some people in this government who sat down and discussed people, members of the government, and um, there were stakeholders who sat down and discussed the technology and, and the what is and the why not behind EPs before you went on for approval at, at, the, at the federal government level. So it is not everything that the person has to know about. He has to have people that he has trusted to put all that in the place. The greatest. So here we are with people who have manipulated the system for their own gain, which is where we still come back to. Our problem in Nigeria is a problem of the people. The yeah. people keep manipulating things for their own personal gain. Yeah, but I'm so not, that, not to call, it also not to, means yeah. that. Yeah, please sorry, finish your thoughts. Yeah, it also means that if it's can actually do the work he was supposed to do. Uh, if he was uh, for, me, for me, with due respect, you, you, uh, you seem to be getting a bit too generous to those who are in power. I don't know, you know? No, you should uh, say uh, 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 No, to be honest. Uh, I have spoken well, about, about, and, and you know why I'm saying yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. You know why I'm saying that? Look, Bitcoin, yeah. global governance, yeah. one central blockchain technology, yes. and yet, it is infallible when it comes to, you can't rig it. Am I making a point? Mm, I have one of the businesses, one of the businesses I own. Yeah. I had to bring in somebody from South Africa to, to impute blockchain technology. And I know the inviolability of that technology as at this juncture. Now, you have a technology that you are even using the person of the president to campaign for because you present it to the public as though it is invaluable, it is not beatable, and it will lead us in the direction of transparency and accountability. And yet, experts, even within the system, are beginning to say, forget about Asu now, forget about Sanu. Even within the mainstream civil service, they are saying it could be tweaked. Then what is the purpose okay. of the hype? Okay, I'm going to, I'm from, from, from what you just um, laid down, I'm, go, I'm going to take a question for that. But I want to ask you, Bula, I know you two are, you are, you're an employer of labor. Mm -hmm. do, do, do your employees have the right to tell you how they should be paid? Do you, do you bring them on board and say, you know, okay, I, I need it to be part of how I'm going to pay you? Because I feel that's what generously the federal government did with, with members of, of ASU when they asked them to be part of um, the, the EPS initiative. Do you, do you as an employer labor, I mean... You see, we... Not, not I, to be, we not don't to be have on the, the side time, of the government. We yeah. don't have the yeah. time for us to go to the history of how universities lost their autonomy okay. under Saburi Biobaku you know, from University of Lagos. And the politics that he played as the vice chancellor of the University of Lagos being subservient to, to the then, to the then leadership, political leadership of the country. Universities are not meant to be run like ministries. But this is just one aspect My brother, of the autonomy, I, I isn't have it? Functioned, yeah. I have functioned in other societies where universities are institutions that galvanize development. What you, what you have in Nigeria, with due respect, yes. you will not get the best of what universities are in other in other jurisdictions with what you have in Nigeria. Because universities cannot be cannot be the harm of somebody who has political power and just believes 
that everybody in the system must be subservient to him. The university is a place of innovation, is a place of creativity, is a place of... So, I'm sitting here thinking, that question is wrong the place. You know, I think you're getting it wrong. Nobody has stopped the university from innovating. Nobody has stopped. They're just saying, on this part of payment or salary. Salaries. Your I mean, salaries come from the government. Of your, of your salaries come from the government. It doesn't stop innovating. It doesn't stop them from academia. It doesn't. You see, but on the part of, we are the ones that pay your salary. And, and like I keep saying, if they had been part of the implementation, they would have noted all these objections and said, look, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. One of and the things, it's one a of the things you are even getting wrong. No, see, from your system. statement, it one of the be... things you are getting wrong. Your salary does not come from, your salary comes from the taxpayer. The government, who, who, who is the governor? Who is the president? Yeah. Because, come to think of it, in a, in a polity, that is what we've gotten wrong in Nigeria. And when yeah, people make no. that statement, okay, but you know what? Yeah, but I'm, 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 God, your salary no, comes from the government, is, and so the no, government no, no, must be no, God. No, no, no. Let's, let's so look at yeah. That's not what we're saying here at all. You know, in every establishment, let me give you an example. In a bank, you, the salary doesn't come from the, from, the, from the MD, the salary comes from the business. Exactly. But it is the HR department through the MD or the MD through the HR department that pays my money or that pays the money. Get yeah, my point? It's the same way. Your I money comes from taxpayers' money. fundamental ideological but difference. Is, you know, but it is the government that administers it. It's a simple thing. Somebody has to do the administration. So at this point, it's the government that is administrating, um, administering the, um, the salaries. And so this is the way they have chosen to administer it. I personally yeah. think that even ASU was wrong. All these things, it's a system. It can all be tweaked. You can tweak sabbatical into it. You can tweak um, payment of substantive lecture. Everything can be done. Because if it can be tweaked for ghost workers to get it, then obviously it can be tweaked any, any, in because any other which, way. Which is what I believe is part of what EPs is meant the, to, the to check also. The primary objective of I mean, EPs yes. is laudable. But when you want to achieve an objective and you are giving yeah. a, and you are providing a rickety method to achieve that objective, don't act sanctimonious when people criticize you. Because if what you are presenting to achieve the objective is not sufficient enough to help you articulate what you want to achieve, people should have the right to say, you know what, this EP is where you they celebrate self. He has a problem. Has a problem. Exactly. There's okay. nothing wrong now, with well, saying this that. This is what I'm going to ask because I, I, I seem, I, it seems to me you're not totally in support of, of the initiative of EPS. Now, since 2015, the I'm inception not, no, of... I'm not against EPS. Okay. But now, we, I, we know that the president, um, he's, 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 um, he's adding about the fight against corruption since he came into... Um, being president in 2015, and up to now, the fight against corruption is still on. And EPS is meant to be one initiative to also check that. Do, do you think this fight? Let me give you example. Yes. Let me give you some examples. The president, since he came to power, has been using at least more demonstrably legislations like the EFCC Act, the ICPC Act, that were put in place by his predecessors. The president, one of the most celebrated accomplishments of, of this president is the use of the TSA. You must remember that yes. Good Luck Ebene Jonathan put TSA yes. in place. How come that the one that he wants to put in place, somebody, one of the, one of the roles of leadership is that when you want to do something that you want to use to articulate one of your, one of your fundamental objectives, you must make sure that you get varied opinion to speak to the integrity of that mechanism. Okay. We are where EP shouldn't have been now relative to the passion of the president to fight corruption. Because EP is being, as we speak, just being lacerated left, right, and center. And it's not. All right, we're, we're running out of time. I, need, I really need to ask this. Now, the union is urged the government to prioritize and fund education in Nigeria, adequately looking at our education budget of this year and in previous years, which has been on a downward spiral of fall from 7.02% in 2019 and 6.7% in the budget this year. Now, do you believe they have a point in, in what they're claiming and what they are certain? Talking about Sanu and Asu now, for me. Um, truth of the matter is that we have never funded education the way we should in this country. Education should be, I mean, apart from defense, education should have been the second most primary important aspect of our governor, of, of, um, of the budget. Yes. But we have never funded education. So I understand when Asu and Sanu keeps um, agitating for 
improved um, funding um, of the educational the sector. sector. We actually do need to improve funding on, edu on, on the educational ground. We, we do. Now, in, uh, yes, and for on. you to know that I am not just, you know, uh, I am not just an iconoclastic supporter of ASU. I am also one who believes that intellectuals in Nigeria, especially those in academia, and especially those who are in management of tertiary educational institutions, they're dropping the ball big time. And why am I saying that they're dropping the ball big time? We we'll know that education has not been adequately funded in Nigeria, but even the little that is supposedly uh, being budgeted for education, the abuses that happen within just, both just the management the and the academia itself, yeah. of our tertiary institutions yeah. is preposterous. You know, uh, so I am not here to be a spokesperson for ASU. It's not the ideal, but you see, my primary area of focus always is leadership because leadership defines ultimately what rises and what falls. All right, for me, in just 30 seconds, your final thoughts, please, if you will. On ASU. Yes, the ASU, the federal government. Okay, I mean, so the interest of Nigerians being considered in all of these talks are going on. Okay, yeah. the honest truth is for me, I've always felt that Nigerians have never expected much from their representatives. We've never had any expectation. The only time we expect something is a few months of election. Okay, they're giving out uh, rice here, they're giving out that there. That's the expectation we seem to have. And until we begin to expect more and demand more from our representatives, we're not going to go far. What about Patrick Shorts in 30 seconds, if you will? I really want to tell somebody like my sister here and those watching at home who have a tendency to speak condescendingly to the, to the impotent sovereign, that is the electors or the electorate, because the system that made them impotent in the first place. You know what? The political class are uh, the priest behind. I wish we could go in and on this evening with you, Fumi and Gola Baba. We're out of time. Fumi Ayola, political <laughs> analyst, and Gola Baba, political why, analyst. I don't know why she's winking in the dark for me. Thank you very much but for I, being part I'm of the a, show this I'm evening and for your wonderful and <laughs> insightful contributions. And thank you for staying with us. We'll take our plus report now. And when we return, I'll be giving you my take. Do stay with us. The Southeast Caucus and the National Assembly have met with the leadership of both chambers to express their worry over the non-inclusion of the region in the approved $22.7 billion loan request by the presidency. The lawmakers, led by the former Deputy President of the Senate, Ike Ekwere Madu, said they have received commitments from both chambers of the National Assembly that projects in the borrowing plan will be spread across all regions. Our thinking is that what the federal government presented was a borrowing plan. So since it's still a plan, so it, there's still opportunity for us, uh, for us to uh, look at the distribution so that uh, every part of Nigeria will have a sense you know, of uh, belonging with the way the money will be managed. Because we believe ultimately every part of Nigeria will be part and parcel of the repayment. So if we're going to be part and parcel of the repayment, it makes every sense that we also benefit from the utilization of those uh, funds. And we're concerned about certain facilities including the um, eastern corridor of the railway from Portacourt uh, to uh, Medugri. We are also concerned about uh, the uh, access to the sea, the um, provision of uh, access to the sea for the people of the southeast, developing uh, seaports in our area, and also power projects. So we hope that by the time the matter is addressed, that some of the fears of our people would have been addressed, and their own concerns would also be addressed. And here is my take. I, I do wonder what our country would be like if our leaders were as selfless as the leaders to believe. I partly share the views on Bola Tinubu and his claim that this is about the 2023 elections. Many are already planning and strategizing for this, and it's not even the middle of 2020 as yet. Many are selfless and only looking to where they can actually siphon the next set of monies, in my humble opinion. Many groups have also come out to support the campaign of Tinubu himself, although that's a story for another day. I also partly disagree with him as I believe that the Adams O'Shomele has made some mistake as the party chairman and his followers just want a breath of fresh air. 
let's not destroy our country over who and who should lead the party. And if his followers don't want him, I think he should bow out honorably. And as for the ASU and the federal government disagreeing on the EPIs, I asked the federal government, how do you expect these groups to accept something that is flawed? I mean, if the ASU was failing pride, saying university lecturers are not civil servants, what about SANU, which was agreed with it, but is now rejecting it because of its faults? It's high time education be prioritized in this country. If you want them to use a new system, you should make sure it is working perfectly well. Nigerians are tired of managing the flawed systems that your leaders have given us for so long and I advise all the stakeholders on this issue to remember those they are fighting for, the students of Nigeria, because directly or indirectly, they will be affected by the outcome. And that's all for today. Thank you for staying with us. Plus Politics returns tomorrow, same time. Till then, be well.